Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Colossians chapter 3. We're looking at verse 17 this lesson, and that's it. Because verse 18, we're going to be dealing with another, another section in uh, the letter to the Colossians. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Is the word of God a joy and a rejoicing in your heart? Or has the world creeped in? Has something begin to come into your heart that's beginning to make the word of God, make prayer boring or mundane and not exciting? Is that what, uh, is, that what is happening to your heart? Is the word of God becoming not exciting anymore? And your your heart, you feel in your heart that you're seeking things of this world, things of this life, things that are passing away. If that's a, if that's the case, we need to cry out to God for a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit, a fresh impartation of God's life, so that when we read the Word of God, it changes our heart. We meditate upon the Word. We have a fresh vision of God in our hearts. So that God's life is ruling and reigning in our hearts. And that's what we're going to be dealing with here in verse 17. So he says here, uh, verse 17, And whatsoever you do, in word or in deed, do all, where? In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Now, how often... Do we go to work or do we go to school or do we go on vacation or visit family? How often do we do certain things in our life and yet we go there in our name? We go there in our name. We leave God out or we take him but we will be in control of the work. We will be in control of this vacation, right? We will be in control of, of our time at school or whatever we're doing. Boredom, frustration, and worldliness will creep into our hearts. We do not see God as the God of details or the God of mundane work, pushing a broom, cleaning a bathroom, washing clothes or dishes, mowing the lawn. We say, we say to ourselves, these are not spiritual duties. Souls are not being reached. How many times have we, <laughs> how many times have we uh, woke up in the morning and said, ah, it's Saturday. I got to clean this. I got to straighten up the garage for, for a, a, a woman or a wife. She says, well, I got to wash the clothes today every Saturday. I got to wash the dishes and dust the place. It's Saturday. I know it's my day off, but uh, this is a working day. It's, it's the mundane day, right? Where everything you're doing is, it seems like it's, it has no spiritual value at all. Why am I, you know, uh, uh, why am I uh, uh, cleaning these windows today? I should be out soul winning. I should be at the church prayer meeting, and 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 I should be doing I should be doing spiritual things rather than these mundane things, and. But didn't Jesus wash the disciples' feet? Didn't Jesus neatly fold his grave clothes after the resurrection? That, that, that one right there probably passes by us. That one there where Jesus raises from the dead. And when God gave him life and he raises from the dead, listen to this. <laughs> Before he left the tomb, he put, his, he put his grave clothes neatly in order. Oh, yes. 
Yeah, he put us great. He made sure everything was neat and in order before he left the tomb. Didn't Jesus work as a carpenter for 30 years before he began his ministry? How many chairs did Jesus make? Or how many tables do you think Jesus made? Or food bowls? Or feeding troughs for animals? Even Almighty God himself was busy with details of life. You understand that? Even God Almighty in the form of Jesus Christ was occupied with the details of life. Are these duties really that far beneath your spirituality? Jesus' daily duties were not too small for him. Jesus knew that every detail was from the hand of God. Therefore, therefore, take every detail seriously. Jesus saw every detail of his life as being from God's hand. And he took each detail seriously. So also we should. This is, this is where our spirituality gets challenged is, is in the details of life. The everyday washing the dishes, the every weekend washing the clothes, the, the you know, cleaning out the garage and the doing the mowing the lawn and making sure the weeds in the lawn are all killed off and, and we have a nice, nice lawn out there. And, and these things, fixing the gutters on the house, painting the, the bedroom walls and those kinds of things, are all the details. And you think to yourself, we're, we're very, very strongly tempted to think I should be out doing spiritual things. I should be uh, with the church out there doing, doing uh, you know, uh, great things for God out there on the mission field or out, out on the, the streets there and, and witnessing and soul winning. And, you know, Jesus was occupied with details also. In Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes chapter, uh, chapter 2, and we're looking at verses 24 to 26. And it says here, There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw, what? That it was from the hand of God. Listen, do you understand that your job where you're working is from the hand of God. I know, I know a lot of people are unsatisfied with their job and they don't like their boss and they don't like this and that and the other thing about their work. But we have to see that it's from the hand of God. This is what he says. Let me read it again. He says, there is nothing better for a man than that he should simply eat and drink. And that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. In his what? In his work. Doesn't say in his vacation time. It says in his labor, in his work. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. Verse 25. For who can eat or who else can hasten hereunto more than I? Verse 26. For God gives to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy. What does God give? What does God give to the person who's good in his sight? When it says good, it doesn't mean in human goodness. It means it's God's righteousness where we're submitted to God, where we have a humble heart towards God. So God gives to a man that is good in his sight. What? Wisdom and knowledge and joy but to the sinner he gives travail 
to gather and to heap up. What is he gathering and heaping up? He's gathering and heaping up travail. This is what the unsaved do. They gather and heap up travail that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. You know, if we have food, listen, if we have food and drink and clothes and we have a place to live, then be happy because it's from the hand of God and rest and, and, and the rest doesn't really matter in eternal, ma in eternal matters. If you've got, this is what the book of Ecclesiastes, I love the book of Ecclesiastes. This is what the book of Ecclesiastes is. It's about a man who had everything. He was the most richest man in the history of this world and will go down in history. The, in, in all the, the years of this, the existence of this earth, there will be no one ever as rich as Solomon was. He had everything. He had the, he had the money the, and he had the wisdom. God gave him extra special wisdom to understand things. And yet in the end, he was, he was an empty man. It was only the last year or two of his life he came back to God and, and he writes three more, three more letters. Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, and uh, Proverbs. And, and so he's, he, he has everything and yet he's not happy. Book of Ecclesiastes tells you what life is like outside of God. The, the, the over and over and overness, the mundaneness of life without God. But he, but he tells us in, in this book of Ecclesiastes that if we have food, and he says this several times in Ecclesiastes, if you have food and you have drink and you have clothes and you have a job, well, and you have a place to live, well, be happy. Be happy for those things because it's from God's hand. The extra boat, the extra motorcycle, the, you know, the flashy, flowery things of this world don't matter because it's all going to pass away. Be happy if, if you have food to eat and clothes to wear and, and, and a house to live in. That's all that matters. It's, and, and see that as God's provision for you. Why? Because we in ourselves, we deserve hell. We deserve the lake of fire outside of God's mercy and compassion. This is, that's what we deserve. If we have, if we, if we are, if we're breathing in air, that's mercy from God. If your heart is still beating, which it should be, <laughs> if you're watching, it should be. Your heart's beating? Yep, that's mercy from God. It's from the hand of God. Too many Christians expect way more from God. They, they, want the, they want the extra money. They want the things so that they can enjoy life. Well, take it from a man who had, who had everything. Everything. Solomon. And yet he wasn't happy. He wasn't happy when he had everything and could do everything. And he could understand far beyond us everything. And he says it's vanity. It's a vexation of spirit. It just goes, the sun comes up, the sun goes down. The waters go up in the sky. They come down. It's just everything is, so everything goes round and round and round. There's nothing new under the sun. And, and we just, we need to see things as the hand of God. So he says here in verse 17, whatever, listen, whatever you do, whether it's in word, whatever you speak or whatever you do, washing the clothes, cleaning the, cleaning the, the, the dishes, mowing the lawn, painting the, painting the house, whatever you do in word or deed, do what? Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Why? Because you are a representative of him. You're, you are his representative. And people are watching you, how you react to mundane things. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And what? Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Giving thanks that he gave you another day. Giving thanks that he gave you a house to paint. 
a lawn to mow, giving thanks to God that he gave you a, a house to live in, food to eat, because that's all we're not. God's not in the business of, 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 you know, unlimited bank accounts, giving flashing money all to his children. No, be, be glad that we have the, the basics of life. Cause that's, that's really, we deserve hell. So we're going to continue on in verse 18 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.